Welcome to Remnant Online Followers. Please kindly subscribe. Thank you. Eternal life enters your spirit, it becomes joy. Joy is different from happiness. Happiness is engendered by things, but joy is of the spirit. You can be full of joy even though you are in the pit. You can be full of joy even though things are not working. Because joy is a spiritual commodity. And that joy becomes your invincibility. That's why Nehemiah 8.10 said, The joy of the Lord is my strength. The reason a man who has eternal life, even if he falls seven times, he rises again, is because of the economy of joy. There is something on his inside that makes it impossible for him to give up. Every other person can give up, but there's a tenacity. There is a stamina in him that makes it impossible. Even when he wants to change his mind, that life will refuse. And so everybody will go down, but he will be standing. He said, when men are cast down, you will say there is a lifting up. What will give you the strength to say that is the joy of the Lord. If we tell you what we go through, you will be amazed. But there is joy. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. How will they arrest Peter? They want to crucify him. He's not begging for his life. He's not thinking about writing a letter to his wife. Rather, he tells them, please. Don't crucify me and face me up. When you crucified my Lord, he was faced up, turned me upside down. I am not, I'm not equal with my master. That's all you can say when you are about to be killed. There's joy. Why do you think none of the disciples denied Jesus? There was joy in their spirit. Even at their last hour, there was a river. They couldn't contain it. That thing overwhelms them. That's why they stood their ground. Too many Christians don't know eternal life. That's why we change our minds. That's why we compromise. Your boss threatens you at the office and suddenly you fidget and you compromise. No, sir, even if I lose the job, I will stand my ground. My life is bigger than the job. The testimony of my existence is bigger than salary. You can't define me based on monthly salary. What I live off is bigger than that salary. I was teaching in a secondary school some years ago. The woman came and told me to cheat in Wayek. I said, cheat, are you not aware that they call me pastor? Cheat in Wayek so that you add 5,000 naira to me. You think I'm here because of money. We are bigger than salary man. Cheat where? She became angry. After a month or two, I had to leave the school. I went, to, I went home for four months. God did nothing. But I told God, you don't have to do anything. Even if for the rest of my life, I'm jobless. I have caught something in you that is bigger than money. After four months, I got another job in another secondary school and they made me HOD chemistry. And God was just watching. It was in that school that revival began. And from there, nations, nations, nations. I asked myself, what if I came under the pressure to compromise? You find many young ladies, I'm 26, hey, my husband is not coming. And one crazy young man comes and says, you must sleep with me. And because of pressure, people throw their virginity away because of what society is saying. Even if I don't marry, if it will take compromise, I will walk with audacity at 35. It's not husband that defines my life. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Compromise because of societal pressure? We have not received eternal life. Many are not aware of what we carry. Nothing breaks us. Even on the cross, Jesus was not broken. Nothing breaks us. That's the power to lay down your life. You find abortion, you find all kinds of immorality, you find compromise on their jobs everywhere. And every day we dress with suit and come to church because we think it's about cosmetic Christianity. When God comes to a generation, he finds out the level of reasonability of that, regen that generation. Living right is a testimony of being reasonable. That now I understand that a price was paid for me. And because that price was paid, I can't live for myself anymore. I can tell you, including pastors, 90% pastors, prophets, and apostles. In fact, it is rare now to find a genuine man of God. And if you can't find a genuine man of God, where will you find genuine Christians from? If fake people are preaching over people every day, how can they be real? And because the men of God know that they are compromised in the very church where they preach, they now tell everybody it doesn't matter what you do. Because the day he dares say it matters what you do, people start crying from the choir.
If it matters, how, why did you touch me? So in order for everybody to be at peace, you have to tell them, forget, sin has been dealt with. It doesn't matter anymore. We are all right before God. So that the person you defied will not come out to accuse you. So that the people who saw you live in iniquity will not come out to point you out. And so you find all kinds of management, character management, reputation management in church just to make sure every sinner is comfortable. And they keep telling them all is well. Not what you do don't matter anymore. You can't go to hell anymore. You can't be judged anymore. Christ has paid it all. We are the righteousness of God. Righteousness is in nature. It's not what you do. And so whatever you do don't matter. And you find sinners gather themselves and they are psyching themselves. Shouting in church every Sunday. And church is all about dancing. That's why you hardly come to church and find people pray for hours. Because if you start praying, what the pastor didn't tell you, the Holy Ghost will tell you. The devil will come and deceive young people. You spend five hours every day in the gym building your chest so that you wear singlet and walk about and show people chest. How much do they give you for big chest? At best, they hire you as a bouncer. You become a bodyguard. You will spend so much time on chest. Dye your beard, shave it, and you are walking. Only you is rubbing hand on your cheek every, every second. There's nothing wrong in looking good, but your life is bigger than a black beard that is well carved. See women going to pump silicone into their buttocks and everywhere to appear. What, 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 what nonsense? Before you are 38, your body begins to fail. You give birth to two children, you are shocked when you look at the mirror. Is this me? He said, though the outward man perishes, he said, but the inward man is renewed day by day. That's where to invest in. Three eyelashes, five mascara, foundation, everything. And the face will change when you are 40. Why don't you build in something that is eternal? There's a glory that will come out of you. That the older you get, the more beautiful you are. Sarah was a grandmother when a queen was admiring her. A grandmother when a queen was admiring her. A woman that is about 60 years plus, a king is admiring her. What powder was she using? There's nothing wrong in looking beauty, beautiful. Shave your beard if you have time. Gym yourself, have a good chest. But your life is bigger than the physical features. How many presidents do you see with a big chest? Does it not suggest to you that it is not about chest? You build chest to go and guide the person who is lanky. They rub cream on their body. The whole skin is shining like bulb. All their gowns stop here. You say, sit down. And you still got married and you are trying so hard to keep this guy. Because if it is king, you used to get him. He, there are many other people with that skin. He said, let your beauty be the ornament of, 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 of meekness. There is something about the inward man. There's a glory that that man carries. That as you beam that light, even if your husband is abroad, your thought is with him. You don't need to police him. He can't wait to come back to you. Because of the ornament of a quiet spirit. Meekness, brokenness, the virtues of life flowing out of you like a river. That's where the true power is. The true power. Take care of your body. It's part of you. But spend more time building your spirit. If you can go to the gym for three hours every day, spend some time in the place of prayer and see what will happen to you. Something will break out of you that the world will come just to look at it and clap. You will become like a spectacle to your generation. People will look at you and they'll be satisfied. They say you are coming to a place, people are taking leave to come there. And if you touch them, they are overwhelmed. You smile at them, they can't sleep. Because of the glory that you carry. This is the heritage of the saints. We are a wonder to our world. But what will make us a wonder is still locked on our inside. Prayer will excavate it. Prayer, prayer, prayer. 
a technology of God. See, people see men of God and they think all is well. Sometimes when we stand here and we are prophesying to people, our house is on fire. If a man of God tells you what is happening to him when he's laughing in church, you'll be shocked. It's because there is something working on his inside that himself cannot explain. Your own child is dying, whereas you are praying for people and they are being healed. And you still go back home and you are struggling with that circumstance and you will not change your mind. You won't look at God and say, it is not where. You will still be faithful in serving God. It's called the joy of the Lord. I was teaching in the Bible school in 2017. My brother fell into coma on a Monday. I started teaching on that Monday until Friday. He died on Saturday. I came back on Sunday and I was doing impartation. I was laying hands on people. They were falling, receiving the Holy Ghost. While I was praying, I was crying. They didn't know. But I can't deny it. There's, a, a, there's an energy in you that when men should be falling, you are standing. Even you don't know how and why you are standing is the joy of the Lord. That's why Philippians 4, 4 said, rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. You are not rejoicing because all is well. You are rejoicing because there's a river on your inside. That river is what Jesus said, out of their bellies shall flow rivers of living waters. So that rejoicing for you is a commandment. And he went further in verse 6. He said, be anxious for nothing in all things by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. How can you be giving thanks in all things? When your father died, how do you give thanks? When business is not working, how will you give thanks? Because there is an economy of joy in your spirit. Did you not read about Paul? In Acts 16, they were beaten and imprisoned. The Bible said at midnight, they gave thanks and praised, and the prisoners heard them. Suddenly, the foundation of the prison scattered. The reason we recover, regardless of what the devil throw at us, is because there is joy in our spirit. And so what eternal life comes to do is to plant the joy of the Lord in your spirit. That joy is your strength. The reason the devil can't overcome you is because there is joy in your spirit. Joy. I prayed for a man two weeks ago. They were married for 14 years, no issues. And this man is a specialist of fruitfulness. If you, you are not, if you are not, if you don't have a child, just go there. He has what he calls family intervention night. Sometimes millions of people connect. Greatest testimony, fruitfulness. But for 14 years, no child. Every time he comes, he comes fired up. And as he's declaring, people are receiving. And what the devil was doing in his life was inconsequential. He couldn't stagger him. He couldn't make him to be discouraged. Nothing shook the man. And when his, when his wife eventually took him, they gave birth to twins. And the whole world celebrated. Because the faithfulness of God, you won't see it until you have joy. If you don't have joy, you will give up before God prove himself. But if you have joy, you will tell the devil, throw your best shot. I will be standing here like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. Some of us are not serving God because of what he does. If God chooses not to bless us again, we will still serve him. I told somebody, even if you find me on the hospital bed dying tomorrow, I won't change my confession. Because I have passed the level of manifestation. I have passed the level of celebrating God for what he does. Even if God does nothing, I'm like the Hebrew boys. If he doesn't deliver us from the fire, we will not bow. Oh king, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. Make the fire seven times hotter. We will stand our ground. Rivers. Denying God, we'll be denying ourselves. There's something here. It's called the joy of the Holy Ghost. The joy of the Lord is my strength. That's what eternal life came to do for you. When you find Christians that fluctuate, they've not activated eternal life. Thank you for watching. Please kindly like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your notification bell so you always get notified whenever we post a new video. And don't forget to share. Thank you.